Hey, what's up YouTube? Here's another video by Ratchets and Wrenches. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a compression test on your engine. I'm going to be doing this on a 2001 Chevy Cavalier with a 2.2 liter engine. And uh, before you start the uh, compression test, uh, since you need to remove the spark plugs, you want to make sure you let the engine cool down for 4 or 5 hours, or preferably leave it to cool down overnight. Uh, since you'll be uh, removing the spark plugs, you could damage the threads if you don't let the engine cool down properly. So you want to make sure you do that and you obviously need a compression uh, test kit and or a gauge set and I got this from Craftsman a few years ago for about 40-50 bucks. You can get the cheaper version of this from Harbor Freight I believe for $20-25 dollars and uh, it should do it uh, if you're a do-it-yourselfer. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, I guess uh, just to explain to you what, what a compression test tells you, it's basically a way to measure how worn is your engine. You know. Uh, it doesn't really narrow down as to where the problem is like if you have if you actually find a low compression on your one of your cylinders it doesn't actually tell you whether it's bad valve or piston rings or uh, head gasket or cracked head or whatever um, there's a way to kind of narrow it down to piston rings and that's a way to do a wet test which I'm going to show you guys uh, later in this video but if uh, you know if that doesn't narrow it down it's not really going to narrow it down to any of the other problems, just basically going to tell you you might have a, you have a compression problem in one of one or more of your cylinders. Uh, but I guess if uh, like if it's in two cylinders that are right next to each other, it could be a head gasket problem. That's pretty common for them for the head gasket to blow uh, right in between the cylinders. Um, but it could also mean a um, you know cracked head or uh, even a cracked block. Um, but yeah, as far as uh, being wanting to narrow it really down to where the problem is, you would need to do a leak down test and uh, I'll do that hopefully in another video soon but yeah so for now uh, here's how a compression test is done and is done on your uh, on an engine so the next step is going to be removing our spark plug wires just make sure you grab them by the boot and twist and pull I'm gonna be replacing the spark plug wires anyway since these look uh, factory um, but yeah if you're not make sure you grab it by the boot and twist and pull Oh look, we broke that actually. Yeah, these are pretty old. I'm going to be replacing these anyway. Right. If you have an old dirty engine like this one here, you want to get your uh, blowgun if you have air compressor and then blow around the spark plugs so when you go to remove the spark plugs no junk and dirt and fall into your cylinder and cause damage possibly. Make sure you cover it with a rag because going to be all sorts of junk. Next you want to get your spark plug socket and, remo socket and remove all your spark plugs. If you're not going to be using them, make sure you, uh, you know which spark plug goes into which cylinder. Next you want to disable the ignition on your engine and you can usually do, do that by uh, removing the, the wire, the cables uh, that go into your uh, ignition coils or just the cable to your distributor and uh, that should take care of it. So next we need to disable the fuel system and we do that by first finding our uh, fuel pump relay which is usually in the under the hood junction box and in our case it's going to be this relay right here. And just, uh, just find it and pull it and that should do it. So next you want to screw this part in to your uh, where the spark plug comes out. You just need to get this hand tight. You don't need to really go crazy. Just make sure you put some WD-40 or oil on the threads so it makes screwing in and out of the spark plug holes easier. Next you want to put on your gauge. And then you want to go inside the car, press on the gas pedal, press it all the way down to the floor, and then crank the engine about six or seven times. I'm going to do it seven times. Just make sure you do it all the same for each cylinder, and so that way you don't get any false readings. And then you want to come back and start recording how many pressure you get per cylinder. And I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but I think the spec for uh, pressure per cylinder for this car is about 125 to 160, or 165, I believe. Uh, you want to make sure your battery is fully charged or if you have a good battery in the car. Okay, so on cylinder number one, we got about 127 or 8. Uh, that's just barely within uh, 
within the range. Uh, so we're just going to go to the next cylinder. Uh, what you don't want to see is basically more than uh, 7 to 10 percent or difference between each cylinder. So hopefully we won't have this on have that on this car. Okay, on this one we got about 120, actually 118 or so. That's, that's a little below the spec, but uh, it's not 10% off than the first cylinder. So we're just going to move on to the next one. Okay, cylinder number three is actually 125. Again, that's, uh, that's within the same range as the other ones and towards the lower range as far as the spec goes. Okay, and again we got a uh, 125 for cylinder number four. So as you can see, this engine is kind of worn. <laughs> it's only got 92,000 miles on it, but uh, it probably wasn't taken care of that well, and uh, probably the oil wasn't changed on time, and uh, probably the cylinder wall walls are a little worn. So what we're gonna do next? Uh, we're gonna add oil to a little bit of oil to each cylinder, and that's. Uh, then uh, do the same same thing for each cylinder and then measure the PSI and that will be our uh, results for our uh, wet test and that's gonna tell us whether the the piston the, the piston rings are sealing against the cylinder walls properly or not okay so in order to add a couple of drops of oil into your cylinders uh, I was gonna use this uh, turkey baster looking thing I don't even know where I got this from or when but it's as you can see it's broke so I'm just gonna Improvise and basically just gonna stick into the spark plug holes and then uh, get some uh, just a little bit of oil at the top of it and then uh, that should be fine. This requires very good aim, by the way. Okay, so basically it's the same thing as we did earlier. You want to make sure you do this one cylinder at a time. You add oil to one cylinder, do the test, then add oil, do the test, add oil, do the test, do the crank the engine. Otherwise, if you add oil first, it's gonna spray out and uh, get all over the place. Alright, as we as I uh, suspected, that's a pretty substantial jump. That's, what was that, from cylinder number one, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was about uh, uh, 120, roughly around there, and uh, we got 170 plus. That's about, uh, what is that, 40%? Yeah, that's huge. As uh, so, yeah, we got pretty worn uh, piston rings or cylinder cylinder walls, and uh, at least in cylinder number one. So we're gonna go ahead and do that for the other cylinders. Okay, now wet test cylinder number two. All right, now we got also another big jump. Not as big as the first one, but it's still 154. I guess close to 155, and. Uh, yeah, that's about 20%, I guess. I think this was also 125 or 120, so roughly around there. Um, so yeah, just going to go to the next one. All right, wet test cylinder number three. All right, not that big of a jump on this one. So we got 135, so this one is not as worn, I guess. Uh, still not the best compression, <laughs> but just not as worn as the, not as worse as the other ones. Okay, wet test cylinder number four. All right, now we got 140, 141, 142 on cylinder number four. Again, not a big jump, but uh, uh. You know, still overall our uh, our compression results aren't the greatest for this car. This engine, I would say, is definitely worn. Just not been uh, probably well taken care of. I would say uh, the oil changes are the most likely culprit. They haven't been done on time, and as a result, you get some uh, some extra wear on the on the cylinder walls. Even though it's only 92,000 miles on this car. So yeah, that uh, that concludes on uh, our uh, compression test for this car. And I uh, hope this uh, helps you guys out there. Gives you or gives you a general idea on uh, what a compression can a compression test can show you and uh, how to do it. If you guys have any comments, please leave them down below. And uh, if you guys like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And I'll uh, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.